there and welcome to a bonus episode of Travels with Jordy. If this is your first visit, my name is Peter Knowles and I live on this and at least one more uh, classic wooden motor cruiser in and around Victoria, British Columbia, along with the loving memory of my pup Jordy, all the while fixing them all up for some pretty ambitious cruising. If that's the sort of thing that you might find interesting, please consider sticking around and subscribing. I'd love to have you. has been a bit of a scattered week. Started off with a project that's sort of unrelated to wooden boats and then tried to get a few more things done. And well, you can see over my shoulder, the biggest problem in my life, practically the biggest blunder in the history of travels with Jordy. We'll talk about it a little more later. All right then, so today's project is a little different. Yes, we've been to the lumber yard and we have a whole schwack of pressure treated lumber. I haven't bought pressure treated lumber in over a decade and that just looks like old lumber. But anyway, it's all good. Um, can you guess what it might be? Oh, these are wet. Okay, well, I wouldn't have expected you to be able to figure out what I'm up to because it's a bit obscure. Um, the shed is a perfect size for poem. It just fits. Zephyr sticks out about six feet and Jordy sticks out about 10 feet. Um, so what we're gonna do is build a little extension, a little ramp, a little mini dock on that side um, so that uh, Lady Zephyrus can board by walking all the way down that side out onto that dock and onto the swim grid of Zephyrus. Now, that's not essential because you can climb in the window and Lady Zephyrus would be happy to do that. But young Finnegan, uh, her new pup, uh, may not be so keen about that on a regular basis. So what I'm gonna do is build a little extension dock there um, and it'll only be down when it's in use. When it's not needed, I'm gonna put a, a little hand winch on it and it will wind up against the end uh, gable of the boat shed there and be out of the way. Okay, so let's, 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 let's go, let's go. Okay, so the basic footprint is four by eight. And that will be achieved just like so. Okay, so the idea is your end is going to be on hinges and attached to the end of the shed and my end is going to have this float which just locks down in place. Now to be fair, it doesn't quite uh, and that's because there's a tiny little nub on the edge of this right there that makes it extra just slightly too wide for a four foot overall which is what I want so that my decking will go down properly. So I'm just going to have to make a tiny notch afterwards to account for that, but that's small price to pay. You think it would have, yeah, no, it's fine, it's fine. Okay, so I got these dock brackets uh, to provide a little stiffness on the inboard end, and normally they'd go on the inside like that. Thus, the arrangement of the uh, holes for the carriage bolts makes sense. However, I got a lot going on in here. I got some bracing and some blocking for the hinges. So I'm actually going to put them on the outside, uh, which makes these holes useless. But it's no problem. I can drill a couple more holes there. And that will give me a chance to run some lag bolts into my bracing here. So that, that should work out just, just dandy.
So I'm going to put the same cross member in, uh, uh, the same as at that end. Uh, so it's, uh, it's the same 21 and 3 quarters, 21 and 3 quarters. But what I need to do is uh, make a mark here, which is going to be the inside of it. And then measure the diagonal, because that's going to tell me what my brace is. So it's 31 to the point, roughly. But I'll show you why it doesn't have to be exact in a minute. So, set this all over to 45. Flip it and just... There we go, good enough for me. So we're looking at 31, which is there. So if you think of it, it's an inch and a half thick at 45 degrees. I'm gonna go into the wood three quarter of inches in back from that. Roughly, roughly, roughly. We can fine tune this a lot more later. Pretty good point. Pretty close to 31 inches. Now I'll show you in a minute why it doesn't have to be exact. Let's make the other one. Okay, up to this point, square has been all that critical because all these connections can bend. So let's make sure it's nice and square, which it is not. <laughs> uh, so kind of, uh, uh, here we go. Good enough for me. So now you'll be able to see why it wasn't absolutely crucial that these are exactly the right length because that's just going to sit in there like that and then i'll just bring the next cross member in right like this uh, uh, don't drop in the water and uh basically it'll just pin in against wherever it lands like that now uh before i do that i'm actually going to rip this down because i'm going to lay in a big section here on the flat which is what i'm going to be able to uh bolt the hinges to at that time so let's just take an inch and a half off of here Fall in the water now, Peter. You know, while this is still relatively light, I'll uh, tip it up and attach the float, which technically isn't at the right angle right now. Okay, so we got these extra bolts to put in here. Now we're coming to the weakest thing in this whole project and that's the hinges I was able to get. Now, these are just barn door hinges. They're solid, but they're probably not really stout enough for the weight of this, but they'll have to do. So what I'm gonna do, uh, because there's no real way to attach it to this, I'm gonna put a big block in here, two by 10, um, lots of fasteners all the way around. Then the deck will go on, then this will be bolted through the deck and into the two by 10. Uh, the two end ones will get nice long bolts into this uh, header piece at the end. So 
it'll at least be attached to the dock as well as is possible. And all these um, fasteners here will be long bolts that go into a two by 10 header that's gonna be attached to the dock. The reason I couldn't use those classic dock hinges, you see them, the sort of knuckle hinges you get them at most hardware stores, is that you don't get 90 degrees of rotation. They're only intended to compensate for wave action. They won't actually allow the whole dock to tip up. And I mean, it's getting to the point where tipping this, oh, it's actually not that bad. Well, the deck's not on it yet. Um, uh, so well, this should do. The fact that they're spaced apart almost four feet, I, I think, I think, well, we'll see. Okay, so the problem here is I have to make some notches for some fasteners here. Right there, and right there. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is get this wheel off and uh, whatever else is going on here. Okay, I got a schwack of fasteners. I'm gonna make that two by 10 bulletproof. You know, the neat thing about designing in real time is that you have the option to revise in real time. This is a really great gang, plank, ramp, dock thingy. It's great. That is not as great. It might have been okay, but I'm not happy with it. So, it would be much stronger if all of that was up on the end of the main structure of um, the boat shed, and I could really tie it back much more securely. I'm not gonna do it today. Lady Zephyrus is on her way here to pick me up, to take me back to the city so that I can run uh, MV Zephyrus down here tomorrow. So it gets a little complicated. More on that in a bit. I think I'll bring Jordy back. There's actually a reasonable chance that it might be a couple of days before we get back here with Zephyrus because I think uh, Lady Zephyrus might like to do just a little mini cruise uh, to see what uh, Finnegan thinks of that. So I think I'd rather, if Jordy was in the shed during that time, yeah. I have a few things to lug in and out of Jordy, so it'd be much simpler to do in the shed. I'm pretty sure I'm not doing this in high speed. I think we had enough of that, didn't we?
Well, good morning. Well, the time has come to completely vacate uh, the Causeway Marina. Uh, if you look around, you can see it's starting to become more of a uh, sailboat racing marina. Uh, and over the next few hours, it's going to absolutely fill chock-a-block with race boats uh, for the Swiftshore Offshore Race, uh, which happens this weekend, I guess. Anyway, so we're just preparing Zephyrus uh, to slip our lines. I'll start the motor in a minute, and uh, we're off to Jenna. We have a perfect, perfect day for it, and the tides are largely in my favor, which is pretty good. Okay. Beautiful old Perkins starts first time every time. I must say, I do love this motor. We have a bit of a narrow gap here to get through. And all their boats are in one place. And good morning. Well, it's time to get some paint on these cabin tops. And uh, a little bit of a de-dusting with a bit of damp cloth. And uh, this is not an elegant <laughs> paint bit of work, uh, but it will uh, be much better than it is now.
good to the last drop. cruise up into uh, Todd Inlet which is just on Saanich Peninsula had a really nice little stay in here uh, really 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 sweet spot and it was uh, young Finnegan's first cruise and he absolutely uh, nailed it uh, in fact he was all over the swim gear last night checking out the seals so very pleased with that okay back to work well, I don't know how well you're going to be able to hear me, but here's a little update on poem. Now, I alluded in the Beer of the Week last week that the sting job was not as nice as I'd hoped. Now, to be honest, I've actually made the starboard side worse in an attempt to tidy it up, uh, trying to blend it in, and I really didn't do a very good job. But the biggest problem is I was frustrated, and the sun was behind me, and... The new stain was just cooking onto there in seconds, so I really couldn't do any blending. I have a plan, which I'll share with you in a bit. Um, but mostly what I need to do now is move the boat. Um, this one sort of made sense because it's kind of a work dock here at the marina. But as you can see, it is a big boat. And it's been like this for worse non-stop for a week now. And it doesn't really look like it's going to let up. So I just can't work on the boat here. Um, so I do have to get a few things done uh, that are noisy and dusty, which is basically sand the foredeck and a few things, and then I'm going to move the boat around into the marina proper where it'll be a lot easier to work on it. Anyway, I don't know if you caught any of that. and welcome to the Travels with Jordy bonus beer of the week coming to you this week from the cozy cockpit of Envy Zephyrus on a mooring here in the middle of Genoa Bay. Let's get straight to the beer. Well, Doug, thank you ever so much. Um, a fine fennel, a fellow out there named Doug um, has a sister with a boat here in the marina and her husband uh, Karen and Glenn, her husband, uh, arranged uh, to have this beer brought to me. So thank you ever, much, ever so much Doug and of course uh, Karen and Glenn. It is Sneaky Weasel uh, by Balderdash Brewing in Vancouver and I've never had it, I've never heard of it and uh, let's give it a go. It's been a kind of a miserable day of sanding and bucking big waves and bouncing around so this is uh, very very welcome um, there we go it's a lager and doesn't it look like one cheers it's an awesome can I would say it's just another Canadian lager um, but very drinkable and very pleasant. Um, apologies, Karen and Glenn. I am enjoying it. Anyway, um, let's jump to some paperwork. Uh, last week's, last, last week's, because I forgot to give away a shirt, uh, last week. Uh, so last, last week's uh, winner of a Travels Jordy t-shirt is Stuart Creaser. Congratulations, Stuart. Uh, you've won yourself a t-shirt. Get a hold of me and I'll make sure, uh, we send it out to you. And this being a bonus episode, there's yet another winner of a Travel to Droidy t-shirt, and that individual is Peter Brandt. Peter Brandt, get a hold of me, and uh, we'll get your t-shirt out to you. Congratulations.
And I'd like to say a great thanks to two new patrons that came aboard in the last little while, and they are Jerry uh, Lapointe and Bruce Durant. Thank you ever so much to both of you. I'm very, very grateful. Cheers. There we go. Well, it. Um, I think I showed you. We went for a quick little cruise on Zephyrus. We run down to uh, Todd Inlet, which is a sweet little spot. I'm sure I showed you all about it. And that was well-timed because um, the frustration and stress level had gotten up a little bit. And I'm feeling so much better now uh, to the point where I think the word of this week, uh, the word of the week this week will be relaxed because I am learning to be more relaxed and as all of you should as well. Cheers. See you next week. Finnegan here, who is uh, is uh, in a pretty rambunctious mood right now. But anyway, let's get straight to the beer.